attention, please. Shabbat shalom, everyone. My name is Sonia. My name is Sonia Jalebel of Dea Hawkins, and I'd like to serve you forever as a priest starting very soon. It's now time to start finding your seats for Sabbath services. May I have your attention, please? Shabbat shalom, everyone. My name is Son of Israel Abel Obadiah Hawkins, and I'd like to serve you forever as a priest starting very soon. It's a privilege and honor to present to you the sons and daughters of Israel Abel now entering the sanctuary. And now I'd like to present to you the son of Israel Label, Bayer Hawkins. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Today I'm going to be talking about the two witnesses. If you can turn over to Revelations. Revelations 11, it's on page 977, Revelations 11, 3, and it says, and I will give to my two witnesses to perform their prophetic offices, and they will foretell events about the three and one half years those cast about with darkness. Scholars have struggled for centuries to understand this prophecy but have not been able to. It wasn't until Yahweh's house revealed who, revealed these prophecies concerning the two witnesses. So why is it so important to understand who these two witnesses spoken of in Revelations 11 3 are? It's important because it pertains to the time period we are living in right now. They explain what will occur to mankind in this time period, what the scriptures foretell regarding the future of mankind, warning us what we must do to protect ourselves from what is to come. This is why it is vital to know who these two witnesses are. Now let's talk about the work that these two witnesses are commissioned to do and what they will foretell. Most know about the scripture and revelations regarding the two witnesses but they don't really understand this prophecy. We must go back to the prophet's writing. In order to, but to really understand this prophecy, we must go back to the prophet's writings. Their names were given, the time period they would be born, and even details about their lives and what they would do. If you can turn over to page 558 in your book of Yahweh. 558, it's Isaiah 44. Verse 1, 2, and 8. It says, Yea, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Yeshua, whom I have chosen. This is what Yahweh says, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, and Yeshua, and beloved Yeshua, whom I have appointed. And verse 8 says, Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared? You are my witnesses. Is there a source of power except me? Truly, there is no other rock. I know not one. So you can see their names are Jacob and Yisrael. And they were formed from the same womb, which means they are brothers. If you can turn over to Isaiah 44, verse 5, on page 558, it says, And one, one will say, I belong to Yahweh, and the same will call himself with the name of Yaakov. The other will subscribe with his hand and write, I belong to Yahweh, and surname himself with the name of Yisrael. Pastor told us how he was, the story of how he was inspired to change his name to Yisrael, and the story of how Yaakov changed his name under duress. The two witnesses are also referred to in scriptures as two olive trees. And the, two, and the last two lamps on the seventh lamp lampstand, as it says in Revelation, 
as sh it shows in Revelation 11.4. If you can turn over to page 719. Page 719. Zechariah 5. Zechariah 5, verse 10 and 11. And it says, Then I said to the Malik who was speaking with me, Who or where are they, the two witnesses going with the ephod? And they said to me, To build the house of Yahweh according to the standard of perfection sent by Yahweh's laws in the Babylonian land, which does not yet exist. And it will be established at that time when the two witnesses are called out to their work as the established as the established place of habitation of Yahweh, the house of Yahweh. So we can see here that the two witnesses would establish the house of Yahweh in a land that did not yet exist. The house of Yahweh was officially established in the United States in 1983. So you can see how precise, you can see the precise details of the fulfillment of this prophecy. Another job of the two witnesses is to teach the laws of Yahweh and warn what occurs when the laws are broken and that because of sin, the world will experience the greatest time of trouble ever, ending a nuclear war. We must also understand that only one witness would be left alive to finish off the work, finish off the last day's work. And that is Yeshua Hawkins. If you can turn over to Isaiah, page 558. Isaiah 43, verse 28. And it says, Therefore I will dissolve the Levitical priesthood and give Yaakov to the curse and Yeshua to reproaches. The witness Yaakov died on 3-22-1991. Yeshua Hawkins has been given to reproaches. He has been ridiculed and slandered since he started preaching the message of Yahweh. He has even been arrested because of propaganda and lies, just like the prophecy shows. Yahshua said, if they hated me, they will also hate you. They hate him because he exposes their sins. If you, er, in Isaiah 44, verse 1 through 2, it shows a difference in these two men's. The different assignments, Yaakov, my servant, and Yeshua, whom I have chosen and appointed. Yeshua Hawkins is the chosen branch, the last day's witness of Yahweh. He will finish Yahweh's work through the guidance of Yahshua, who is leading and guiding this work together with Yeshua Hawkins. If you can turn over to page 719 in your book of Yahweh. It's Zechariah 6, verse 11 through 13. And it says, Take the silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of Yahshua, son of Yahshua, the high priest. Speak to him and say, This is what Yahweh of hosts says, Behold, the man whose name is a branch, for he will branch out of his place, and he will build the house of Yahweh. Yes, he will build the house of Yahweh. He will bear glory and will sit and roll on his throne he, he will be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace will be between them both. So remember, the only way to learn the truth about Yahweh's laws and, prop, and prophecies and have protection from what is to come is to follow the teachings of the one sent from Yahweh at the house of Yahweh, the last day's witness, Yisra Hawkins. And with that, if you all please stand. At this time, it's a privilege and honor to present to you uh, Son of Israel Abel, Deacon Israel Bill Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. 
I understand that we have proof that we are being heard in 114 different countries. Praise Yahweh, and that's including North Korea. <laughs> so uh, pay close attention because the house of Yahweh is, is not just another religion. The title of my sermon today is Television About a Donkey Vision. And two weeks ago on Sabbath, we heard about a man named Philo Farmsworth that invented the television. And, uh, and also, if you remember, there was another man we heard about called, or named John Logie Baird uh, that went to, uh, to work with the Clyde Valley Electrical Power Company, and not the Clyde here in, in Texas, but uh, over in Scotland, the Clyde Valley Electrical Power Company, uh, and his name was Baird. And then between 1902 and 1907, Arthur Korn, like the, the judge we have here, Judge Korn, invented and built the first successful signal conditioning circuits for image transmission. So uh, back to Philo Farmsworth, this man here. Philo Farmsworth. Uh, he was an American inventor and television pioneer. And it says here on uh, the third page of this article, he first demonstrated his system to the press on September 3rd, 1928, and to the public at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia on August 25th, 1934. Now get that date, August 25th, 1934. So that was the first public display. If I could have my first slide. So you can see there the, the, food, or the moon makes its first uh, uh, pose there. And you see the date is circled August 25th. And my next slide, if I could have my next slide. You see there, August 25th, 1934, the man in the moon has posed for his first radio snapshot. So the first thing that he showed in, on the television was the moon. And if you remember, Pastor Space was also seen on the moon. Now what else occurred on August 25th? Nobody knows. The donkey vision, right? That occurred on August 25th, 2011. If I can have my next slide. So there it is, August 25th, 2011. Now this was exactly 77 years later. August 25th, 2011, and 116 days after that was the sign with the age and the SHDHF. Now the donkey vision was seen over the homestead, the same place that Pastor Yishel Hawkins and his brother Jacob Hawkins dedicated the work. And in the 12th book of Israel, chapter 1, and ver starting at verse 8, it says here, On August 25th, when I saw when Yahweh showed me, Yeshua showed me the donkey cloud, it was a magnificent sight. And when I first glanced up and saw that donkey, it was easy to recognize that it was a donkey, and it was very plain, very distinct. I thought, yeah, this is how Mary gets her pictures up there, but the cloud wasn't moving. It just sat there. And I got to looking at it, and I said, no, this is not like Mary uses. This is of Yahweh, I said. And I saw the details of this donkey plus the pack on her back or his pack, and her ears pointed, to, pointed forward, and her head raised up like she was staring at this cloud in front of her. And this was over the homestead. I went back and checked it out later, and sure enough, it was over the homestead, and reached to the west, and then back to the east a long way, just totally covering the house of Yahweh property. So you know, all this adds up, but the things I'm going to show you, it even gets better. But that was on the 25th of August. I mean, yeah, the 25th when I saw this, 
And then I told you about it on the 27th of August, 2011. Told the whole house of Yahweh on that Sabbath day. The 28th, the artist started to working on this picture, on a picture for the donkey cloud. On the 28th, that's when I turned 77 years old, was on the date they started working on that cloud. That probably, that would probably add into that thing too. And sure enough, it does. He turned 77 on August 28th. And remember, 77 years before that, before the donkey vision on August 25th, this man made the first public display with the television. And he was shown the donkey. And if you remember in Genesis 49, found on page 43, and verse 11 says, tethering his donkey to the vine, tethering his donkey colt to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine. He will wash his robes in the blood of grapes. And uh, back to the 12th book of Israel, still in chapter 1. And verse 106, this is near the end of, of the chapter, verse 106, it says, And up over this house, up over this house, and up over this land Yahweh has given us, that was actually dedicated to Yahweh. He shows us the donkey. And he shows us the cloud in front of in front the donkey, which represented the olive branch. The olive branch and the donkeys. I got your attention, right? And that's what is showing there. And that's what is showing there. The donkeys are in full focus. The olive branch has got the attention of the donkey that's carrying the load. That's getting the message to the entire world that would bring the nations, the nations to humble themselves to Yahweh. So getting this message to the entire world using the television as one of the means. Now, in fact, either in the year uh, 82, 1982 or 1983, uh, Pastor Yitzhak Hawkins did his first television show in Texas on KTAB, Channel 32, and the Hebrew for 82, to soar, to fly, uh, and also 83 means opinion, uh, wings and winged, so flying, like the the waves through the sky. Now tell a vision in Gematria, we've seen this before, equals to 828, which is pastor's birth date. And Daniel 923 in the interlinear says, uh, let me get it here. It says, and I have come to tell. Now the words to tell equals to, or is, uh, is 5046 in the Hebrew. And this means to be conspicuous, told, answered, certainly told. Let me see if I can show you here. Uh, here's 5046, to be conspicuous. Told, answered, certainly told, declare, declared, declares, declaring, describe, display, explain, fully report, give evidence, indeed tell, inform, uh, informed, made known, make known, messenger, report, reported, surely report, surely tell, told plainly and uttered, uh, certainly certify, declare, expound, fully, Messenger, like the seventh messenger, stand boldly out opposite to announce, always by word of mouth to one present, to expose, predict, explain, and the messenger. Now, I want you to focus on the word there, conspicuous. Uh, it meant to be conspicuous. Now, number 77, which remember 77 years after the first uh, public display of the television, was the donkey vision. Now the word, uh, Hebrew word 77, right here, is also conspicuous. Okay, so 5046 and 77 are the same. They mean the same thing, conspicuous. 
Now, the definition of conspicuous, if I could have my slide. Okay, and if you see it there, it says uh, easily seen, clear, visible, noticeable, discernible, uh, perceptible, perceptible, detectable, uh, and down in the second line, manifest, evident, apparent, marked, pronounced, prominent, and the last two words on the second line there is crystal clear, okay? And then we have distinct, recognizable, and unmistakable. So all these things are in the definition of conspicuous, but I want you to get that crystal clear, like the, the LCD TV, the liquid crystal display, making the image crystal clear. And if you look over to 1 Corinthians, Chapter 13 and verse 12. This is found on page 896, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. And it says, Now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a blurred reflection, but then face to face with perfection. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, even as I am now fully known. And in the King James Version, it says that we look through a glass darkly or, you know, with the, the blurred reflection. But with the teachings of Pastor, it becomes more clear or crystal clear. Now, Pastor was born by the bridge that connects Purcell and Lexington. Uh, and this is this bridge here. The U.S. 77 South Canadian River Bridge connects Purcell and Lexington. It says the James C. Nance Memorial Bridge is a deck truss bridge crossing the Canadian River between Purcell and Lexington, Oklahoma. The bridge carries U.S. Route 77, U.S. 77. Now, uh, for a while, this bridge was closed. Um, you can see here the emergency closure it talks about here. But when this bridge was reopened, right here, the bridge was reopened to traffic with a load posting on June 13th, 2014, or 613, 2014. Now, this was a big event uh, when this bridge was reopened. They had a lot of uh, important people there. And remember, 77 means conspicuous, which means crystal clear. And if you look over to Revelations, in closing, look over to Revelations chapter 22 and verse 1. And this is found on page 985, Revelations 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of Yahweh and of the Lamb. Remember the teachings of Pastor, making the image crystal clear. And with that, if you'll all please stand, it's my great honor and privilege to present to you the great Kahan, Benjamin Hawkins. Shabbat Shalom, great saints of Yahweh. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. You may be seated. Now let's, uh, let's uh, fine tune this. Let's get the resolution even better. Let's uh, clarify some more things and make them clearer for you. Um, did everybody get their YPN news release last night? Everybody on the YPN uh, email list? Okay, because this is really great. <laughs> uh, this is from last night, 2-17, uh, 2017. Pa Texas pastor says, if we are willing, we can get it back and have peace among the nations. It's not too late. And, uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the subject of the newsletter is all about the two witnesses. Okay, all about the two witnesses. Now, you know, this is beautiful because it ties in to 217. And I was telling pastor this morning, I said, you delivered that just in time and gave me a beautiful uh, opening for the explanation on this number 217. If you remember... Uh, a couple of years ago in 2015 when the wave came out, the wave picture, um, in Scotland, 
Uh, we did a lot on that number 217 and the white stone in Revelation 217. And if you remember, this year is 2017. You know, just drop the zero and you'll have the 217. But let's remind ourselves what 217 means. 217 means in the, uh, this is in the Hebrew, it means light. Light. It's from 215. And by the way, you can uh, write down Isaiah 49, 6, that Yisrael is given, our great overseer is given as a light to the nations. Okay, remember the seventh light that lights the space in front of it, that enlightens mankind with the laws of Yahweh. Okay, it's from 215, which means to be or become light, to shine, to give light. To make shine of the face. You know, may Yahweh's face shine upon you. Now, 217 in the Greek is equally as interesting. It means salt. Salt, okay? And it says, salt is a symbol of lasting concord or unity. It means wisdom that's exhibited in someone's speech. Wisdom and mercy exhibited in speech. And if you remember in Matthew 5.13, what did Yahshua say you are? You are the salt of the earth and the light. Okay? The salt and the light. Okay? And, and that's what Israel, the great overseer Israel Hawkins is to the world at this time. And you as the colts of the donkey, right? Also, it's from 251, and it means a brother brotherly brother of the same parents okay and that's what we're going to be talking about today the two witnesses i'm going to pick up right where i left off last time when we were talking about that number 322 and uh let's see let me get over here here's the book i'll be covering the two witnesses new light all right and if you remember the gematria of two witnesses, new light, is 322. Lo and behold. We're going to cover this. But I only gave you one definition last time. I'm going to expand on it a little bit here. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tune in the resolution a little better. If, you are, if I'm going to remind you, 322 in the Hebrew meant backward, and it's from the word akor, and it meant afterward or west. Remember West, the Western light. Remember Jacob, the witness Jacob represents the Eastern light on the lamp, the sixth era of the house of Yahweh. The seventh era is the Western light. And as you can see, that's what it means. It means the West or the time to come, the time after the witness Jacob. It also meant, uh, it meant brother of wrong. And I, we explained a little bit about that, how, and you can read the Two Witnesses book about how uh, Yaakov brought customs from the east, and that caused separation between him and pastor. But I didn't show you the Greek definition, and uh, I need to show that to you now. It means to lift up, show forth, show clearly, proclaim, appoint, uh, to proclaim a person's appointment to an office. Okay? Now, if you remember what Pastor said also, it means uh, to show. It's used in Acts 124 where it says, Show which of these you have chosen. To produce anyone as elected to an office to announce as appointed. Now, if you remember what Pastor said in the Two Witnesses book, he didn't understand until after the death of Jacob, the witness Jacob, he did not understand these things that clearly, okay? It was only revealed after the death of the witness Jacob, and as was indicated this morning, here's his tombstone, or his, uh, not tombstone, but his uh, headstone, and notice the date of his death, 322-1991, 322. Okay, so... Now, that's when it became clear to pastor after that. So that's the definition of the word 322. And remember I showed you this as you're entering into Abilene. 
Right there, there's the entrance to Abilene. You see these two numbers, 83 and you see 322, loop 322. Okay, now there's a reason for this. And if you remember, I showed you the length of Highway 1983, or 83, it was 1,894 miles, and it meant able. <laughs> it meant able. But it gets better, okay? Because Yahweh uh, is it's so amazing, you know, how Yahweh is, is, is making this so crystal clear who, these, who he's working with in these last days. Folks, this is not a church, you understand, right? This is not, uh, this is the house of Yahweh, the living Father. The only one on the face of the earth. The only ones on the face of the earth that Yahweh is working with. Is that sinking in? <laughs> All right, now, I'm not going to, I can't reveal too much here. I can only tell you this much. <laughs> this is on the tag of the great witness. It's had it for a couple years now. I can't reveal the rest of what's on that tag, but I'll tell you what it means. It means able. It means able. It means to cry out with a loud voice. It means to speak out. It means food supply. No, not the, you know, well, he does feed us really well. Okay, but he's talking about the spiritual food supply that comes from the mouth of the witness. It also means to return to soberness. <laughs> the world is drunk on the teachings of the Catholic Church. Who's going to turn that around? That's right, the great house of Yahweh. It also means awe-inspiring. And I'm going to tell you, it's truly awe-inspiring to see these things. I don't know how we sleep at night. We work very hard, that's how we sleep. But otherwise, I don't know how we can sleep. It's just too amazing to me. Now let's go back for a minute. I was also telling you last time about this horsehead nebula from 1888 that was discovered in 1888. And it was discovered on, as you can see, February 6th, 1888, by the woman from Scotland. And I want to show you what that date means. And I want you to think about Isaiah 44. Here's what it means. It means behavior and conduct referring to what is established and settled according to a fixed exact design. It means it refers to a believer exemplifying enduring qualities that specifically glorify Yahweh. Now who would that be? And all of us that are following in his footsteps, right? And it's from this word here, and look what it means. To set, establish, a point, to set in order. Who will set it in order? Revelation 11, Isaiah 44. Who will set it in order? Who is I? Put in charge. To put in charge, give standing authority, which enables someone to rule or exercise, you know, not force in a mean way, but exercise rulership like Yahshua did. Remember being a servant to all. That's Pastor Israel Hawkins and all the, the cults of the donkey, right? Service. We need to remember service to others. To set an order to a point. And think of those, Isaiah 44, 7. It means appointed, put in charge. Remember Matthew 24, 45? Uh, the ruler that's put in charge. The faithful servant that's put in charge. And it means to make, ordain, a set, a point, to designate. That's just in the date 2688. That's when that nebula was discovered. Now get this. The first picture that was taken of this nebula. Of course, this is way before NASA was around. This was January 2nd, 1891 by a guy named Max... Uh, Max Wolf, okay, there's the date, and I kind of put it out in red for you. So we're going to look up 1291 because it was January 2nd, 1891. 
So let's look at this date. And it means, it says corresponding to Barak, which is this word here. It's the word Barak, and it means to kneel, the knee, and it means blessed, abundantly blessed. Okay? That's 1291 in the Hebrew. Let's look at 1291 in the Greek. It means to set apart, to charge expressly, to give a commission and an order, to command expressly, to set oneself apart, to enjoin or charge. And it's from the Greek word stello, and it means to set and arrange, like set in order, okay, just like we read on the other definition, to prepare, to gather up, to gather up. To bring together, now notice here again, to set in order. <laughs> Who is I will set it in. Let's read that in Isaiah 44, 7. Let's turn there real quick. Just to remind ourselves about the two witnesses. It says, on page 558, it says, And who is I will foretell and set it in order for me? Well, I can tell you who will do that. Because it says right here, As foretold by Yishro Hawkins. Okay, that's who will do it. And it says, since I appointed the ancient people and the things which are coming and will come, let them foretell them. But who will set it in order? Well, he's showing us very clearly, very crystal clear who that'll be. Now, the house of Yahweh, as you know, was established in 1983. And we went over last, last week, 1980, when it was... Uh, when they had the, uh, oh boy, the dedication in 1980, 12 to 1980. And uh, we went over some things there about uh, Genesis 4.26 and how, you know, that meant to invoke the years from uh, Genesis 4.26 to 1980 when a uh, pastor and his brother established, or not established, but, um, ah, help me out. Dedicated. 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 Or renewed the worship of Yahweh, right? And that's what it says in the two witnesses book. So uh, turn to Zechariah 5. Turn to Zechariah 5. So we can get set up for this. I'll give you a page number. Zechariah 5 on page 719. Remember, Zechariah also talks about the two olive branches, uh, the two... Uh, the golden pipes, you know, the two witnesses, the two olive trees, just has a great uh, future. And didn't uh, uh, the great sons of Israel able do an excellent job this morning? You know, regarding these two witnesses, you know, I hope everybody was here to hear it, okay, because it was very, very, very interesting, very enlightening. Okay, now, uh, let's look at uh, Zechariah 5. And as I said, it, it talks about the two witnesses. Look at verse 10. It says, then I said to the Moloch who was speaking to me, where are they, the two witnesses, going with the ephah? And he said to me, to build the house of Yahweh according to the standard of perfection uh, sent by Yahweh's laws in a Babylonish land which does not yet exist. Okay, now we all know that that's talking about the United States of America, which wasn't, you know, first of all, get it out of your mind that Columbus discovered America. He didn't even set foot on this continent, Okay. He went, he went to the West Indies is about as far as he got. And, uh, but uh, America was actually officially established in, in 1776 when it was found, when it was the, the Declaration of Independence was signed. So let's look at this. This, uh, if you have a book of Yahweh with the times in it, you know, when these chapters are written, Zechariah 5 was written in 519 B.Y. So... If we go from 519 B.Y. to 1980, we have 2,499 years. So let's look at 2499. It means pass. And then it's from 2496, and it means renewed. To sprout. Sprouts. Like in Isaiah 44, uh, 4. They will spring up as willows among the watercourses. If you look up that word spring up, it means to sprout. Okay? 
sprouts, it means a new or renewed. Remember the two witnesses dedication, the renewal of the worship of Yahweh. But it gets better. It means to go on forward, to grow up, to grow up. And remember, we're in the growing process, the green. Remember the green, the growing, okay? Okay, to grow up, to sprout, to renew. That's to 1980, remember, when the dedication took place. And it matches the definitions of that dedication in the Two Witnesses book. But notice this. If you take Zechariah 5, 519-BY to 1983 in the establishment of the house of Yahweh, guess what you get? You get 2502, and it means Yoshiah. Well, what does Yoshiah mean? And you can find this on page 322 in 1 Kings 22. I believe it's 1st or 2nd Kings 22. The word Yeshia. As you'll see, it means founded by Yahweh. Founded by Yahweh or foundation of Yahweh if you look in your book of Yahweh. Founded by Yahweh. Isn't that amazing? 2 Kings 22.1 for your notes on page 3.22 is where you'll find Yeshia mentioned. So it says founded of Yahweh. Well, that word found, if you notice here, it means, it means establish. Establish or originally establish or originate an institution or an organization. Interesting, right? So, I put uh, the House of Yahweh established, you know, the, the booklet we have, this great booklet right here. All right, the House of Yahweh established into the Gematria calculator. And lo and behold, what comes out? 1776. That was when America was established, right? Now... It gets a little better here because, okay, in the, in the book, Mark of the Beast, Pastor, and there you go, let's plug that Israel Says, okay, um, you can find this in Israel Says, just type in Babylon, New York, like I did, and uh, on page 134 of the Mark of the Beast, Pastor points out in New York City, there was a place called Babylon, New York, or in the state of New York. Babylon, New York. He wrote about this because he was comparing New York with Babylon, okay? So, I got to thinking, I wonder how far Babylon, New York is from the press room in uh, Abilene. It says 1,776 miles. <laughs> 1,776. <laughs> so, are you seeing the connection between the house of Yahweh in the establishment, the, where it tells you here in Zechariah about this house being established in a Babylonish land that did not yet exist, does he not pinpoint where it is? Does he not make it crystal clear? All right, so for my last part, I want to talk about another event, and I, uh, I marked it in my book so I could turn right to it. Let me plug this. That's my bookmarker, by the way, <laughs> right? This beautiful bookmark. Okay, and it, it talks about a lawsuit that was, uh, you know, once the house was established, you know, they tried to bring it down. They tried to bring it down, but the gates of hell will not prevail. A lawsuit was filed in the fall of 89. Pastor got word. The house of Yahweh was being sued by a well-known sacred name assembly. Our attorney's opinion, now I need you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Our attorney's opinion was that the organization was attempting to squash the house of Yahweh. Just as they had squashed every other organization that used Yahweh's name. Of course, they didn't know who they were messing with, right? You don't mess with the creator of the universe. You know, I mean, once he establishes something and it's his intention, you, can't, you cannot change that. And I, the pastor told me the man that actually did this was very regretful afterwards. You know, he, he realized, he said, man, I don't, you know, I've realized I've messed with something I shouldn't be messing with. But that was afterwards. 
Now, he says that this lawsuit, you know, they got this lawsuit, and that's when his brother joined him. Jacob joined him to save the house of Yahweh so they could stand together and save the house of Yahweh. Now, what they did is they both signed. Can you zoom in a little bit? They, right there. It was at this time, he says, that I and my brother joined forces to battle this assembly. And on July 4th, <laughs> of all dates, right? Wasn't that when America was established or something? On July 4th, 1990, they uh, made a reciprocal agreement that they could both use, you know, the name House of Yahweh. They joined forces, the House of Yahweh Odessa and the House of Yahweh in Abilene. That was on 7-4-90. And uh, they were summoned. They got a summons in the mail. Isaiah 48, 13. My hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I summon them together, they will minister together. Okay? Now, does everybody know what a summons is? A summons is... Zoom in, please. A summons is something you get in the mail calling you to court that you've got a lawsuit, that you have to answer a suit. Okay? Now, it wasn't Yahweh that sued them. <laughs> Don't get that in your mind. Yahweh didn't do that. Yahweh allowed this to take place for a reason. That that word summon is word 7121, and it means to call, to sue, summon, summons. Also, it's the word that you get, that word uh, where Jacob had a hostile encounter on the train. Remember that? It's the same word used, 7121, means a hostile encounter. It's from 7122, and it means to encounter, encounter, to encounter whether accidentally or in a hostile manner or under duress. Okay, now you remember they were trying to squash the house of Yahweh? Y'all remember that? All right, let's look at the word squash. Squash means to crush. It means to crush. That's the first definition. They signed this reciprocal agreement on 7490, and it means to crush. <laughs> it means to crush. And it's from this word here, the Hebrew word ra, and it means afflict. It's from 7462, and it means friendship. Be each other's companions. To be companions, friends. To associate with as a friend. Pastor, shepherd. You see how they came together to stand up against this trying to crush the house of Yahweh? That word minister means to take a stand. It's Hebrew word 5975, and it means to defend, to establish, to join. Remember, they joined together. It means to resist, to restore, to stand, take a stand, stood firm. And the witness Israel did stand firm. And guess what? For my last definition right here, when you have a lawsuit, when you have a lawsuit, there's always a prevailing party in that lawsuit. A prevailing party is the winner in a lawsuit. Well, guess what? The gates of hell will not what? They will not prevail against the house of Yahweh. Yahweh has established this house, and it ain't going nowhere, Pope Francis, Vatican. Anybody that has plans to bring Yahweh's house down in any way, forget it, man. Join the house of Yahweh. Maybe on the winning team. <laughs> You know, be on the winning team. We'd love to have you, you know. Be on the winning team. And at this time, it's been an honor and a privilege to, to talk with you this morning. And if you'd all please stand, I'd like to turn it over now to the great Kahan, Ilya Hawken. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may all be seated.
Well, of course, with all the things taking place in the news, we want to focus this morning on a few things. There's so many things taking place, but we want to remember what prophecy says and what the house of Yahweh is bringing forth this prophecy, because that's what makes the house of Yahweh who and what it is today is it brings forth this prophecy and it fulfills prophecy. And we want to first look at the refugees, which you don't hear much about right now, but they're still fleeing and there's still millions of them in distress. Now, the articles we want to show this morning, I want you to keep in mind that they're talking about how they can't deal with 100 refugees here or 400 refugees here. Look at the living conditions and also look at the hatred, especially in France where they push them out of a refugee camp and they're fighting not to let them back in. And their hope is, is to push them into another country so they don't have to deal with them. And of course, well, which country is going to quit pushing these people? They're kind of like a pinball going around back and forth. Well, they don't know it yet, but they are headed somewhere, and it's not France. It's uh, somewhere else that we'll address here in a second. In fact, Isaiah 2, 2, and Micaiah, verses 4, 1 through 3, says that they will say in these last days, Come and let us go up to that promotion, the house of Yahweh, so we may learn of his way. But keep in mind how they're not dealing with hundreds, they're not dealing with small amounts, so what's occurring to the millions? Remember how we brought out about children are disappearing? The ones that Pope Francis said, let the, you know, let these, don't shut these people off, then all of a sudden their children are disappearing. Well, of course, they're not wanting to help these people, they're not wanting to take care of these people, they're wanting to eliminate these people. And keep in mind what these people are running from. Of course, Aleppo, if you remember Aleppo, the city in Syria, that has always been said that whoever wins Aleppo gains control of Syria. Well, you don't hear much about it anymore, but there's still a lot of fighting going on in Aleppo. In fact, it was just recently this last week. If you remember, we brought how they're saying uh, the Taliban are the ones who are fighting against the coalition, as they said. Uh, the terrorists is what they refer to them as. They accused them of dumping large amounts of diesel fuel in the water to where it wasn't drinkable. They're saying they got all that cleaned back up, and then once again, the water was shut off to that city again. You have to have water to live. You don't have water, you got to go outside of there to get it. But that battle is still going. And I want you to keep this in mind, because the United States um, recently admitted, RT is reporting it, the United States admitted that they were using armored piercing weaponry, bombs. Well, that doesn't mean anything to you until you realize that they're also enriched with uranium. Now, I want to read you something about uranium because it's very important that we understand this. And it says, and this is from Wikipedia about uranium, it says in 1798, the discovery of uranium in the mineral uh, pitch blend is credited to Martin Heinrich Kalprath, who named the new element after the planet Uranus. Now, research by Otto Hahn, Lisa Meinther, and others such as J. Robert Oppenheimer, started in 1934, notice in 1934, led to its use as a fuel in the nuclear power industry and in Little Boy, the first nuclear weapon used in war. Keep that in mind. What created that nuclear weapon was uranium. Now, uranium gives off colors. Keep that in mind also. To have a nuclear explosion, does it matter the size of it? No, it doesn't have to be this uranium bomb that was exploded. Remember the colors. Remember we have red, yellow, and blue. Keep in mind that they've admitted they're using these uranium bombs, which is leading to deformity, it's leading to miscarriages, and it's leading to birth defects. It's a great way to eliminate generations to come. Now, think about what occurred to those in Japan in Hiroshima and Nagasaki whenever they detonated those bombs. They still suffer to this day in their, gene, uh, their genes and the things they passed down to their children, the people that suffered. If you remember White Light, Black Rain, the show that we, we showed in the sanctuary, the documentary that was made concerning that. Keep in mind what's being said and what's coming forth. And think about these explosions. Think about what's taking place and think about what's said and think about what prophecy said it would be. It's more important that we understand that what the house of Yahweh is bringing is right on line with what's taking place. And what we may have imagined it should be, well, we might not be too much there. We might want to see this huge bomb take place where the whole world sees it lights up. That's going to take place eventually, but don't let it escape us 
these things are already taking place. Even if it's on a small scale, people are suffering, millions are dying and fleeing, and it's all taking place in and around that great river Euphrates. It is coming to pass. It is taking place. And in all of these things we see taking place in Syria and in and around that area, of course, President Donald Trump recently this week, he had a press conference, a 75-minute press conference, where he called the press corps in, and uh, many of them were running. Uh, Scott Paley of CBS News goes in to talk about how they were running to get ready for it. It was unannounced. And as they came in, of course, we show a little bit before he was elected president, one of the press corps asked him, he said, you've called us losers, you said we're all losers, and President Trump said, no, not all of you, just most of you. You're liars. And of course, uh, he went on to say, well, are you going to do this when you become president? He doesn't even let the man finish his question. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that, absolutely. And he kept his word this week. That's exactly what he did. He reminded the press corps once again of how they're liars. Well, if he didn't know that, he could have come here. We could have told him years ago, the media will lie about you. We've known that for years. Well, watch what's taking place because as he's addressing this, watch how the media's not giving in, he's not giving in, and there's really no questions or answers being dealt with. The only thing that's being dealt with in these last days are the prophecies that are brought forth in the house of Yahweh that are absolutely positively coming to pass just exactly as brought forth by the one sent. But pay close attention. It's not meant for amusement. It's meant for education. So if we could go ahead and please play the news. Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, we have uh, the ongoing refugee crisis taking place, uh, depleted uranium in U.S. weaponry, mm -hmm. and United States President Trump's take on the media. Uh, these are just a few of the things we'll be covering in today's broadcast, but first, the desperate refugee crisis in France. Uh, once bustling camp in Calais has become a wasteland, French officials are determined to not allow it to become yet another camp. Uh, Deputy Prefect of Pa de Calais, Vincent Berton, said of the camp, it's not dignified for France, it's dangerous for the migrants, and it's not good for the local population, for public order, and for the local economy. Well, Calais has suffered a lot with this migration crisis. Uh, the position of French government is quite clear. He said it does not want new camps in Calais. Refugees haven't stopped filing into the area by the signs of the abandoned makeshift camps surrounding Calais. Now, these are indication that migrants are living very basic with no running water, toilets, and the ground under their feet being soaking wet. Mm. Now, there is an official camp in North France about 30 minutes drive from Calais, but they only have enough space for about 1,500 people, and that camp is already completely full, so mm. nowhere to go. Yeah, I'm sad. Officials say that more unaccompanied minors are arriving, and it's hard to keep track of them. A migrant camp director said minors are difficult to follow. Now, this camp is partially financed by the state, but it's an open camp, so we don't check people's identities when they come to the entrance. Uh, they stay as long as they want, then they leave when they want. So today it may be 50 minors, tomorrow 25, maybe 75. Well, the UK was going to take in about 3,000 unaccompanied youths, but that plan has been dismissed, leaving some of those children seeking dangerous ways to get there. One 13-year-old young man from Afghanistan said that he and his friends try to jump on UK-bound trucks mm. every night. Now, last month, a young man from Ethiopia was killed after being hit by one of these trucks. Uh, the first youth migrant killed trying to reach the UK after the jungle, known as the Calais. Uh, the migrant camp in Calais was torn down late last year. Hmm. Well, they say a desperate time sometimes call for desperate, desperate measures, measures, and sadly right. some lose their lives in the process. Well, on the other hand, uh, Serbia is building 
uh, having received money from the EU. Uh, it is now uh, housing thousands of migrants who are stuck within its borders. Uh, Abu Ahmed, a Syrian refugee, is trying to reach his family in Germany after trying to cross the border three times. He said that they were pushed back at the border by police uh, who beat them brutally on the hands and in their feet, on their feet, in an attempt to break their bones. Well, according to uh, Mr. Ahmed, this uh, takes place every time they do reach the border, but he said he's determined to reach his son. He said he'll rest there uh, for a couple of days, and then he's going to try again. Well, according to the UN, over 7,000 refugees are documented in Serbia, and most are from Afghanistan. Serbian officials are in limbo as they wait for a solution. Ivan Miskovic, the Serbian commissioner for refugees, said, We are waiting for the European unified solution. Are they going to make a deal with Pakistan, Afghanistan, or are they going to open borders again? We are waiting for a solution. Yeah. Well, in Belgrade, it's almost the same situation, but without the nicer amenities found in Serbia. Uh, hundreds of mostly Afghan migrants are stuck there after the EU closed its borders late last year. Currently, some of those migrants are holed up at an abandoned train depot with raw sewage and garbage scattered throughout. Uh, but with the borders staying closed, this, of course, is testing the limits of migrants uh, who some say you know, one or two months of the borders being closed, well, you know, we might be able to uh, do that. That might be tolerable, but one or two years, they said? Yeah. Huh, no it's way. A long time. Yeah, too long. Well, many of the migrants in Belgrade are, like Calais, unaccompanied minors with no one to look after them. They do whatever they can to stay warm, even though the smoke from whatever they find to burn is sometimes toxic and choking. Now, one migrant youth said, we have a problem of not being able to go to school because of the war, the Taliban, and Daesh. Mm. Uh, he continued, I want to go to school in Belgium. He says, here it's completely awful. We're breathing in this smoke. We're cold all the time. We don't have enough clothes. Uh, we don't have any showers. But the men and the boys at the makeshift camp refused to go to one of Serbia's official camps. Uh, outside on the walls in spray paint, someone wrote, please don't forget about us in a plea to Europe asking that the simple things in life not be forgotten about for these migrants. Well, continuing coverage of the crisis, we can see European nations growing ever more intolerant of migrants. They agree to allow them right of safe passage, as they call it, mm -hmm. through their countries, but do not want them to stay. But, what, but while the refugees walk towards what they see as a better future, their options become limited. That's right. Some countries are closing their borders, such as Hungary, along its border with Croatia. And this denial of access into the European Union has slowed the flow of people and diverted it towards neighboring Slovenia. The government there says it can't cope with a large influx of people either. They allow 2,500 migrants into their country a day. But as Bastian Sifik, the Slovenian state uh, secretary, explains, these people need to be just passing through. The problem arises when countries they are heading to, like Austria, will only accept 1,500 a day. Mr. Sifik told TRT World, we cannot accept a number of migrants larger than the number of those who will continue their journey. In a very short time, in maybe 10 days, we would have 35,000 migrants, he said, in Slovenia, which is unacceptable for us. So the numbers would go get too high too quick. Right. They couldn't take them all. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Greece is another country receiving nearly 5,000 asylum seekers daily coming from Turkey. They are heading north through Macedonia to Serbia. And as the winter weather gets colder across the Balkans, the crisis becomes more miserable with each passing day. Uh, aid agencies have warned if the flow of refugees gets interrupted, the already bottleneck situation will get bigger and lead to even worse suffering. The Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, or UNHCR, is trying to help with this humanitarian crisis, but admits there is no plan in place to truly lessen the people's suffering or the European country's burden. Now, neither the United Nations nor the EU have any real political solution, solutions to handle this mass migration, which in turn means there is no relief for the pressure being felt at the borders and no relief for the people who have been forced to flee their own homes and lands 
in search for a peaceful existence. It's interesting that two a uh, large collection of nations can't come up with a solution to solve this problem. That's right. And it's getting very desperate. Well, while the refugees are fleeing, the battles in the Euphrates are still raging. Uh, YPN's Larry McGee is covering the latest uh, concerning Syria for us and also a shocking report on the confirmed use of depleted uranium weapons in the region. Larry? Despite ceasefire efforts, the cycle of violence in Syria continues, with government forces having reportedly edged closer to the pivotal city of Al-Bab in the province of Aleppo. The emboldened government is also said to have captured a village east of the city that is believed to have been one of the last strongholds for ISIS mercenaries in the region. Additional territories also reportedly back under government sway include three cities near Palmyra, which at one point were occupied by Takfiri insurgents, a reacquisition which is said to have come through much government bloodshed. As a consequence, numbers of mercenaries are reported to be surrendering to state authorities under amnesty being offered by the Syrian government. Meanwhile, emboldened Syrian head Bushar al-Assad is vowing to liberate every inch of his war-beleaguered nation from terrorists. The leader has stated that the military's primary objective at present is freeing the ancient city of Palmyra and the eastern parts of the nation. The momentum of the battle is said to have turned to support the Syrian government following its capture of the critical city of Aleppo. The critical resource of water has been the target of last-ditch efforts by insurgents to cripple the city of Aleppo. This is following on the heels of an outage that left the area water destitute for a month. Takfiri mercenaries are reported to have cut off the vital resource from its spring at al Hafsa. The province's governor has stated that government forces have been working feverishly since then to restore services in conjunction with organizations such as the Red Crescent. Much to the alarm of Syrians and other concerned onlookers, the U.S. is acknowledging that it restored its use of depleted uranium while allegedly striving to combat ISIS in 2015. The operation was reportedly called Operation Inherent Resolve, where 5,265 rounds of armor-piercing incendiary were used with the reported intent of severely damaging the ISIS infrastructure, which enabled the mercenaries to generate revenue through oil sales. The issue with regard to the use of the weapons begins first with the fact that the U.S. gave a public statement at the outset of the 2015 operation stating that aircraft have not and will not be using depleted uranium munitions. The false assurances were aimed at easing fears related to the blowback the U.S. received for its use of DU munitions in Iraq in 2004, which was followed by reports of significant increases in infant mortality, miscarriages, and birth defects. Even more alarming were stats revealing higher cancer rates among citizens in the area than the survivors of Hiroshima. For IPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Time, Jeff. Back to you. Well, it's a terrible situation with that depleted uranium. It shows you how the war goes so much further than just the actual battles. It goes years and years beyond. The suffering continues. Mm -hmm. Well, back in May of 2016, Donald Trump went on the offensive against the media, calling many of them losers as they criticized him personally and questioned his motivation for donating $5.5 million to the veterans' charity. When asked if the press could expect the same kind of reception if Trump made it to the White House, he told the Daily Mail, if he's president, he will continue to berate dishonest reporters who write libellous stories about him. And uh, libellous uh, Catan is something that's written untrue to cause someone to have a bad opinion of someone. So hmm, interesting. He's, uh, he's getting on them for their falsehood. Yeah, he sure is. Well, now that he's president, Donald Trump is living up to his promise. Uh, on his 28th day in office, he called an impromptu press conference catching everyone off guard. Let's take a look at some of those excerpts. I turn on the TV, open the newspapers, and I see stories of chaos. Chaos. Yet it is the exact opposite. This administration 
is running like a fine-tuned machine. And with that machine, Mr. Trump boasted he has accomplished more in less time than any president in history. But the media, he said, are blinded to that by hate. I'm going to continue to attack the press. Look, I find the press to be extremely dishonest. I find the political press to be unbelievably dishonest. I will say that. Many, you know, we do have other people. You do have other people, and your ratings aren't as good as some of the other people that are waiting. Pretty good right now, actually. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. If I may ask, sir, you said earlier that that WikiLeaks was revealing information about the Hillary Clinton campaign during the election cycle. You welcomed that at one. I was okay with it. You said you loved WikiLeaks. At another campaign press conference, you, you called on the Russians to uh, find the missing 30,000 emails. I'm wondering, sir, if you... Well, she was actually missing 33, and then that got extended with a whole Maybe pile after that. But that's no, no, but I did say 30, but it was actually higher if, than that. If I may ask you, sir, it, it sounds as though you do not have uh, much credibility here when it comes to leaking, if that is something that you encouraged okay. in the campaign. Fair but question. Ready? If, if I may ask you that... No, no, then, but you, let me do one at a time. Do you mind? Up. Yes, sir. All right. So, in one case, you're talking about highly classified information. In the other case, you're talking about John Podesta saying bad things about the boss. I will say this. If John Podesta said that about me and he was working for me, I would have fired him so fast your head would have spun. He said terrible things about her. But it wasn't classified information. But in one case, you're talking about classified. Regardless, if you look at the RNC, we had a very strong, at my suggestion, and I give Reince great credit for this, At my suggestion, because I know something about this world, I said, I want a very strong defensive mechanism. I don't want to be hacked. And we did that. And you have seen that they tried to hack us and they failed. The DNC did not do that. And if they did it, they could not have been hacked. But they were hacked and terrible things came in. And, you know, the only thing that I do think is unfair is some of the things were so, they were When I heard some of those things, I I picked up the papers the next morning. I said, oh, this is going to be front page. It wasn't even in the papers. Again, if I had that happen to me, it would be the biggest story in the history of publishing or the head of newspapers. I would have been the headline in every newspaper. I mean, think of it. They gave her the questions to a debate, and and she should have reported herself. Why didn't Hillary Clinton announce that, I'm sorry, But I have been given the questions to a debate or a town hall, and I feel that it's inappropriate, and I want to turn in CNN for not doing a good job. And if I may follow up on that, uh, just something that Jonathan Carl was asking you about. You said that the leaks are real, but the news is fake. I guess I don't understand. Uh, It seems that there's a disconnect there. If the information coming from those leaks is real, then how can the stories be fake? No, the reporting is fake. And if I may ask, I just want to ask... Jim, you know what it is? Here's the thing. The public isn't, you know, they read newspapers, they see television, they watch. They don't know if it's true or false because they're not involved. I'm involved. I've been involved with this stuff all my life. But I'm involved. So I know when you're telling the truth or when you're not. I just see many, many untruthful things. And I'll tell you what else I see. I see tone. You know the word tone. The tone is such hatred. The tone is such hatred. The tone is such hatred. I'm really not a bad person, by the way. No, but the tone is such... I do get good ratings, you have to admit that. The tone is such hatred. Oh, Jim, if you look, the hatred, the, I mean, sometimes, sometimes somebody gets, well, you look at your show that goes on at 10 o'clock in the evening. You just take a look at that show. That is a constant hit. The panel is almost always exclusive anti-Trump. The good news is he doesn't have good ratings, but the panel is almost exclusive anti-Trump. And the hatred and venom coming from his mouth The hatred coming from other people on your network. Now, I will say this. Uh, I watch it. I see it. I'm amazed by it. And I just think you'd be a lot better off. I honestly do. The public gets it, you know. Look, when I go to rallies, they turn around, they start screaming at CNN. They want to throw their placards at CNN. You know, I, I think you would do much better by being different. But you just take a look. Take a look at some of your shows in the morning, in the evening. 
If a guest comes out and says something positive about me, it's, it's brutal. Now, they'll take this news conference. I'm actually having a very good time, okay? But they'll take this news conference. Don't forget, that's the way I won. Remember, I used to give you a news conference every time I made a speech, which was like every day. Okay? No, that's how I won. I won with news conference and probably speeches. I certainly didn't win by people listening to you people, that's for sure. But I'm having a good time. Tomorrow they will say, Donald Trump rants and raves at the press. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm just telling you, you know, you're dishonest people. But, but, I'm not ranting and raving. I love this. I'm having a good time doing it. But tomorrow the headlines are going to be, Donald Trump rants and raves. I'm not ranting and raving. Aren't you concerned, sir, that you are undermining the people's faith in the First Amendment, freedom of the press, the press in this country, when you call stories you don't like fake news? Why not just say it's a story I don't like? When I do you that. call it fake news, no, you're I do undermining that. confidence no, no. in our I do news that. media. Here's the thing. Isn't okay. that important? I understand what you And you're right about that, except this. See, I know when I should get good and when I should get bad. And sometimes I'll say, wow, that's going to be a great story and I'll get killed. I know what's good and bad. I'd be a pretty good reporter, not as good as you. But I know what's good. I know what's bad. And when they change it and make it really bad, something that should be positive, sometimes something that should be very positive, they'll make okay. They'll even make it negative. So I understand it. So because I'm there, I know what was said. I know who's saying it. I'm there. So it's very important to me. Look, I want to see an honest press. When I started off today by saying that it's so important to the public to get an honest press. The press, the public doesn't believe you people anymore. Now, maybe I had something to do with that. I don't know. But they don't believe you. If you were straight and, and really told it like it is, as Howard Cosell used to say, right? Of course, he had some questions also. But if you were straight, I would be your biggest booster. I would be your biggest fan in the world, including bad stories about me. But if you go, as an example, your CNN, I mean, it's story after story after story is bad. I won. I won. And the other thing, chaos. There's zero chaos. It, we are running. This is a fine-tuned machine. And Reince happens to be doing a good job. But half of his job is putting out lies by the press. You know, I said to him yesterday, they, you know, this whole Russia scam that you guys are building so that you don't talk about the real subject, which is illegal leaks. But I watched him yesterday working so hard to try and get that story proper. And I'm saying, here's my chief of staff, a really good guy, did a phenomenal job at RNC. I mean, he won the election, right? Won the presidency. We got some senators. We got some all over the country. You take a look. He's done a great job. And I said to myself, you know, and I said to somebody that was in there, I said, you take a look at Reince. He's working so hard just putting out fires that are fake fires. I mean, they're fake. They're not true. Wow. Well, one thing's for sure. If those press conferences continue to be just like that, they sure are going to be interesting. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, like we've talked about in this report, hopefully those refugees will actually find a safe haven, a place where they can have their needs met and also actually achieve some peace. Absolutely. The road may be long and hard, but hopefully the end result for them is well worth it. That's right. Well, if you are looking for a place of peace, you can contact the House of Yahweh. And when you do, don't forget to request your free copy of the monthly newsletter and the Prophetic Word magazine. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. Or call them at one 800 613-9494. You can also visit any of their websites at www.yahweh.com, www.yishrohawkins.com, or www.yahwehsbranch.com. You can also visit our website at www.ypnnews.com. You can also email the House of Yahweh at info at yahweh.com. And for all other calls outside the United States, please dial the number on your screen. And of course, don't forget the best study resource to the Holy Scriptures, the Yisrael Says program. You can find that by going to www.yisraelsays.com. And if you have any type of scriptural question, well, don't Google it. Ask Yisrael. You can find that by going to www.askyisrael.com. Well, once again, don't go anywhere. Up next is Yisrael Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. 
And I'm Katan Alexander. Thanks for watching. Well, at this time, I'd like to present somebody that's going to tell you like it was, like it is, and like it will be. The greatest teacher on the face of the earth, the great Kahan Yezra, Label Hawkins. Hello, everyone. We got a house full today. I want to have a lot of racket now for Yahweh, okay? Praise Yahweh. You may be seated. That suit you. You want us to do it again? <laughs> Praise Yahweh. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Uh, the uh, the uh, news there is hard to get, but I tell you, it's playing right in with the with the uh, prophecies today. Uh, I need to make this announcement. Everybody listen. If you need a purple suit, uh, if you need a purple pants or a purple coat or both, uh, we need to correct sizes, of course, of the pants and or coat or both. Uh, and you need to get to work on that. It's, uh, these weeks are passing like days now. Um, <laughs> thing we're fixing to find out what Yahweh meant when he said uh, um, a thousand years is like a day to Yahweh. <laughs> the the uh, reach out that uh, uh, that we're doing, uh, I thought uh, that was great what uh, uh, the great deacon Yisrael Abiel said about was reaching the 114 countries now. That is, we have evidence of that. And uh, many of them are asking for literature. Um, um, uh, North Korea. <laughs> ah, that seems so hard to believe, but it's taking place, just like you always said it would. I don't know if I'll get up to that point in prophecy uh, today, but uh, maybe. If I could get an update on this article uh, that uh, came out Friday, from the beginning there was but one perfect religion for all people, says Israel Hawkins in News Post. And this, uh, um, I think it was 6.30 this morning, this was up to uh, 62,649. Uh, the one for last week, uh, let's reason together as the best way to bridge differences between nations. That one's up to 156,000. The one before that, what does forgiving sin mean to those who promote sin? Ask Israel Hawkins. <laughs> and, and that's uh, up to 170,000 now. Uh, pretty, great, pretty great reach out there. Billy Graham is listening to us. Uh, <laughs> sometimes these guys would be better off if they kept their mouth shut. They, 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 he says, um, uh, Jesus separates Christianity from other religions. Uh, of course, uh, Billy Graham, he hasn't, uh, he, this is the son speaking, not uh, the ancient Billy Graham that I grew up with, uh, the father, but uh, uh, that I looked up to at one time because he, it seemed like he was trying to teach some truth. And uh, But, uh, of course, I outgrew Billy Graham many years ago. Uh, that is later. The, the, uh, uh, this one is... Uh, trying to follow in his dad's footsteps, but he's doing a poor job of it. <laughs> if he could just read the, if he could just read Genesis, you know, if he could just read Genesis, it would help. But they think they can, they can start their own religions without reading the, the scriptures. The, 
The um, way the scripture is written, the here a little and there a little, it's a, it's a, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, that's in Isaiah 28, 13. It was written for the purpose of making it impossible to understand. And, of course, in, in the house of Yahweh, the, you, you know, the, the salvation starts with coming to the house of Yahweh, keeping the appointment with Yahweh, where Yahweh can work with you, teach you, inspire you. Uh, otherwise, you're just, uh, you're just blind like the world. Uh, you're like a blind man stumbling around hunting a doorknob. Uh, and, of course, every move you make is wrong. But in the, in the plan that Yahweh has, oh, thank you. That was, that was instant, wasn't it? That's come up five, over 5,000 already since, since I gave you that number a while ago. 62 to 67,825. That is magnificent. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. A lot of information in that article right there. You need to get it and read it. But back to the explaining it now. Uh, Isaiah kind of gives you a, well, all the prophets do, but Isaiah, I'm, I'm thinking of what he said in Isaiah 28, I mean 58. He said, uh, he shows you to turn your foot from the Sabbath. Now, that's the start of it. If you will just turn your foot from the Sabbath, then these things will occur. Now, he said this many times throughout his writings, uh, and, but, but he, le he kept leading up to another point and another point and another point. And, of course, that's what you have to do to teach the Scriptures. You, 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 can't, you can't read the whole uh, book of Yahweh in one day. Uh, no one would remember it if you could. <laughs> you can, you, you've got, I've, got, I've got to take you up, bring things into your memory, bring you up to a certain point, and then add that to it. And this is what Isaiah did. A perfect example is Isaiah 58, turn your foot from the Sabbath. That's in Isaiah 58. Then in Isaiah 50, 59, he shows you can make contact with Yahweh in that manner. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. So if you'll turn your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your things on Yahweh's Sabbath instead of Yahweh's things on Yahweh's Sabbath, because the Sabbath is his. The Sabbath belongs to Yahweh. It's your appointment with him to sweep his floors, dry his dishes. Whatever needs to be done, it needs to be done on that day. Gather up the scraps. You know, the, uh, the apostles kept the Sabbath perfectly. Uh, first off, they ate. <laughs> they went through the grain fields. They were hungry. They picked grain and ate it. Yes, that's what Yahweh wanted them to do. That's the reason he had the grain there to begin with. And he'd planned that field for them thousands of years before they were born. <laughs> If you, if you know Yahweh that well, you know that that field was planned. The, the audience that saw them picking this so was also planned so Yahweh could correct them in their stupidity who, who made the Sabbath a burden. They greatly polluted my Sabbaths, Yahweh said. Yahshua came teaching the Sabbath correctly his disciples came, keeping it perfectly, gathering up scraps on the Sabbath after feeding 5,000 people. That's a pretty big job. <laughs> the, but Isaiah 58 shows it, here a little and there a little, so that they would go and stumble and fall backward. But today I want you to go over to... to uh, 12 of uh, Daniel, chapter 12, and I want to bring you up to where we are today in prophecy with these refugees. 
when we were talking about that this morning with uh, oh, yesterday and all week, I guess, with uh, the great Elia Hyler Hawkins, uh, I said, we've got to get these refugees in there because uh, I'm getting to the point that I want to cover it in prophecy, and, but we need to see what these people are going through and where they're going to be led to. They're actually being prepared to be led to you here at the house of Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. That's exactly what's taking place, and that's what Yahweh shows. In, in, uh, in Daniel 12, uh, it, you'd, you'd almost have to go back to, to understand this. You'd have to go back to Daniel 11, 44, but tidings will come out of east. I don't want to cover this part right now because it's, it's uh, taking place with certain politicians and and uh, the religion, but uh, but uh, in in eleven. But I will explain this as soon as I see who fill for, who fulfills this prophecy, so you can un understand it too. But in if you go all the way back to chapter eight, before we read this chapter twelve, and look here at verse twenty two, uh, verse. Uh, 25 says, by peace he will destroy many. So he's talking about this great destruction that he's also shown in chapter 12 of Daniel. This is Daniel 8, Daniel 8 and verse 25. By peace he will destroy many. He's going to destroy many. Now if you look at, at verse 17, He's, the last words of that, the time of the end. So we know it's speaking of the same thing that Genesis 49.1 is speaking of. The time of the end. When, <laughs> when the stupid commentators, <laughs> the, 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 they, were, they were nothing more than Christians, you know, the... The, the Yada and the 12 tribes, that's what they were. They were Christians. They were Coptic Catholics that didn't want the laws of Yahweh. They rejected the book of Yahweh. You've got to get that in your mind. They established their own righteousness. That was Genesis. And Yahweh says, I'm going to take this throughout the world. If they just believe the scriptures... I'm going to put this throughout the world, this rebellion that is shown in Genesis 49 in the last days. So you see that, and then you see this right here. You know that Daniel is speaking of the same time period here that Genesis 49 is speaking of. In verse 22, now because it broke off and four, here's your... Here's your first sign of the horns of the golden altar, which represent the quartet. Uh, I'm going to have to write about that, I think. Now because it broke off, and whereas four stood up, you have four kingdoms here, great kingdoms. This quartet that we're speaking of here are very powerful. The most powerful nations on earth. They don't get authority from Yahweh, as we see in Revelation 6, that the United States was given authority to take peace from the earth. So keep that in mind as you see this, see, in the last days, in the end. Well, he, and now, because this tells about this horn that broke off and four others stood up in its place, our four kingdoms will stand up out, out of this nation, but, but not with their own power, not with his power. They're, they're going to step, be standing on their own in the last days, the quartet. These four kingdoms are going to be standing on their own. Now, there's a lot of governments that came in between this, of course, 
that was connected with this, and these four grew out of this one that broke. In Revelations, let's hold your place right there and go over to Revelation 17. Uh, Revelation 17. I'm trying to remember all of this because at the last of this sermon, I hope today... Uh, uh, to get a, a certain point in that you need before the feast, before you, before the Passover. In Revelation 17, look at 1 and 2. And there came one of the, one of the seven Malachim. These are the messengers, of course, uh, of Yahweh with, that he shows in the seven lamp, lampstand that is shown throughout the Holy Scriptures, that this is Yahweh. Anytime you see this, this is Yahweh's works that he has prophesied. And Amos says he will have no, no others. Remember, Amos, Yah? He says, I'll have no other works except these that are prophesied. Well, here in Revelation 17, he says, And there came one of the seven messengers who had the seven bowls and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the sentence of this great whore that sets on many waters. We know the waters from verse uh, uh, 17 is multitudes, nations, and tongues, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. They've all joined. <laughs> These kings, we know, are religions who join, who join Christianity Christianity is nothing but Coptic Catholic. Remember that. It came out of Egypt. That's the reason Yahweh sent them there to begin with. He tells them, don't eat of that tree. But, of course, they went down there and ate of that tree, and their hearts never turned from it. They, they loved it. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, practiced idolatry, that God worship. Yahweh is not a God if you... If you just get that in your mind and, and look at Genesis, don't, don't now, but if you write down Genesis 3, 1 through 5, you will see that the gods are evil and Yahweh says don't eat of that tree, don't take of their advice, don't listen to their teaching, don't follow after the gods, they're evil. He says that in chapter 2, don't eat of that tree or dying you will die. The Catholic Church, the Coptic Catholic, means Egyptian Catholic. Catholic means universal, meaning they worship all the gods in the universe. It's universal. All the gods in the universe. And new ones come up daily. And Yahweh said to them, you got more gods than you got cities. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. They were everywhere among the 12 tribes. How much does it take to get it over to you? that the 12 tribes was Coptic Catholic religion. They were worshiping all the gods of the universe. That's what Christianity is. You're the whorish daughters. Christianity is the whorish daughters of this great horror here. This is what it's showing you here. It's what, what it shows you from Genesis clear through to Revelations. And Yahshua himself said in Matthew 7th chapter, they cannot bring forth righteousness. It's beyond them to bring forth righteousness. The only ones that can bring forth righteousness is the house of Yahweh. Not the house of the gods, but the house of Yahweh. And that's shown throughout the Holy Scriptures. These people that we're getting, I mean, these are not just casual letters. These people are listening out there. In North Korea, that, that was fantastic. Because, the, the, yeah, the messages from these 114 nations, and they're begging for material and saying how great this truth is that they're hearing in these last days. And some of them are saying, oh, we, we knew this ahead of time. We were hunting you. We've been hunting you for years. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've heard that. We, we, uh, we knew that this was going to be in some time, and we were hoping it would be in our lifetime. I remember many of these letters that they write. The practice of idolatry, this is verse 2 of 17, 
the worship of, of Elohim and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk, drunk, confused, uh, confused to where uh, like a blind man uh, trying to find a doorknob in, the, in a dark room. A drunk with the wine of her, that's a teaching of her teachings of adultery, fornication. That's uh, God worship, the God worshipers. Now look at verse 18, verse 18. And the, and the woman whom you saw is that great city, this great whore right here. <laughs> Get it in your mind. This great whore, the inventor of Christianity, the God worship of Genesis 3 verse 5 is, verse 18, that woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the religions of the earth. Yes, all 4,199 religions. The only religion on the face of the earth that she's not reigning over, the only one that's opposing her is given in Zechariah where Yeshua is high priest and we're opposing this religion. There's no one else got guts enough to do it. They're afraid to even open their mouth now. Every if they get a job, they've gone through college for so many years. They give them a job in one of the churches. If they ever bring forth any truth, they fire them. <laughs> Just like Trump fired his a few, a few, a few uh, they fire their preachers too. Well, back to Daniel now, and keep that in your mind because these four religions here are all led by this same character that sits on seven hills of Rome, this great city, the leader of the kings of the earth. If she wasn't leading the kings of the earth, you know, <laughs> if she wasn't leading the kings of the earth, where would she be? She'd be in the house of Yahweh. <laughs> but she's the leader of all these religions of the earth. Now, because it broke off in four. The quartet rose up out of this. They stood up four great kingdoms. We'll stand up. Now, this is in the last days. Remember, 17, last five words. In the last days, the time of the end. Four kingdoms will stand up out of that nation, out of the nation Israel, the 12 tribes. <laughs> Twelve tribes, but not with, not with his power. Now, remember in the last days, and look at verse 23. And in the last days of their kingdoms, so they're still exi in existence in the last days, these four kingdoms, in the last days of their kingdom, when transgressions, when transgressors, when the Roman Catholic Church has spread its evil, deception, rebellion. She doesn't even pretend anymore. We've exposed her to where she's got to come out in the open now. Her sins are exposed all over the world now. She's not practicing righteousness. Yahshua said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of Yahweh, not the kingdom of God's, but the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness. Believe it or not, that was said in Genesis 2. <laughs> the same thing. And then Yeshua said in, in Revelations 22 and verse 14, Blessed are those who do seek the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness because they have right to life. Yes, <laughs> they're the only ones that have right to life. Read these things and believe. Believe what you read. When transgressors have reached their fullness, that's what we're seeing right now. I told someone yesterday I would, I'd have never watched the news. I hadn't, would, would I have never watched the news yesterday evening 
and saw all this because it kept me awake. <laughs> but if you could see what's taking place, it was prophesied, every bit of it, in that fourth part of the earth in and around the great river Euphrates. Syria is, is, is a nation that's mentioned in this time period right now. If you saw the buildings there before these wars started, before one of the quartet was given authority, given authority, she had to have it before she acted. She had to get authority from the Vatican to take peace from the earth. And this is part of it. It gives you the three colors there. As I was talking with the great Kohan Elia Howler Hawkins this morning, I said, I said, that's that three color that we see in Revelations 9. I said, be sure and point that out. But that uranium in, it, that is shown. It's actually shown in, in the Revelations of the ninth chapter. The three colors there. That, and they all are, are set in motion. I'll get up to this later and read it. But they're all, all four, the quartet is all set in motion to bring forth that one hour of great burning of the whole earth. <laughs> and it looks like anyone could see that right now. These prophecies are 100% true and correct. Okay, we're still in 23 now. The transgressors have reached their fullness. The, a king of furious expression and understanding dark sentences, skilled in deception, will stand up. Now, it shows many other things that he will do, and as soon as he does it, I'll point it out to you. His power will be mighty, but not through his own, his own power. If you, if it, th th this comes... This comes not through his own, own power, but that of the quartet, verse 22. Not through his own power, but that of the quartet. And his power will be mighty. That mighty also means nuclear, as you saw in the news today. I hope you caught that, this uranium being used. And it's also going to be used to burn the whole earth. In one hour, his power will be mighty, nuclear, but not through his own power, and he will destroy astonishingly. He will succeed in practice and will destroy the mighty, and it says holy people, but it means every form of holiness. Now get that and remember, it. he's out this this religion, this mighty city <laughs> that gets the power straight from Satan, the authority straight from Satan, is out to destroy all forms of godliness. That's why you, that's why you saw the, the abortions and how they came about. And the lawyers, this, this mock trial. <laughs> I just wrote a letter on it, or I wouldn't even mention it, but you do need to read that letter as soon as you can get it. Get it? This mock trial of abortion. The Wade versus Roe versus Wade. Someone said they found a, told me yesterday they found a receipt where I'd went to college in Abilene. And I said, yeah, I've announced that before. The Roe versus Wade woman <laughs> went to the same college. And in the same year, as I did, I may have sat next to her. I don't know. I hope I didn't. <laughs> Here, on the one hand, in that year, when I was in that college, was righteousness being studied to bring forth Yahweh's righteousness, my studies. And on the other hand, in the same room, probably, <laughs> In the same room was this woman that was hell-bent to fulfill what 
had been set up years earlier, and they were hunting someone to use in this, to bring forth this mock trial, to bring forth to the courts, and that's all it is. It was put on. It was never sincere. They lied all the way through it. But that was put on to bring this forward to get power to make you think it's okay to kill babies. <laughs> and then they say, oh, no, th th that's not murder. That, that child was not alive. Well, stupid idiot, what made you think you had to kill it if it's not alive? Are you absolutely brainless in what you're saying? Can't you see how Satan and got your brain in the hand and squeezing out all righteousness? And it's your job to bring forth, to get rid of all holiness. <laughs> you just can't see that, can you? But in doing this, you're going to destroy yourselves. And that's what Yahweh said you're going to do. That holy people, the, the words translated holy people, it means destroy all forms of holiness. In the same year or two years ago, a few months ago, I, I can't keep up with the time here lately, they brought forth, had had it planned for years and years and years, bringing forth and putting it in the minds that sodomy was A-OK. -okay. Now this is in getting, for, getting rid of all forms of holiness. There was a lot of people, there's a lot of people they turned their heads and made them think that sodomy is OK. They passed a law through the Supreme Court. This, like Roe versus Wade, was set up years ago and much teaching was done before it got, got down to this point to where they actually had their judges ready in the Supreme Court and run this through for all the people to see. Even Billy Graham's son spoke against it. And I thank you for that, <laughs> Mr. Graham. You just really need to turn to the rest of Yahweh's laws and, ad and, and admit that they are true and correct and this world is on a downhill stumbling roll that's going to burn them up. Yes, there'll be ashes. That's what Malachi, Malachi 4 says. There are going to be ashes under the feet of the righteous. That's going to end. That's going to bring this about in one hour's time. Holy people, verse 25. And through his policy now, through this same one's policy in this, this time period right now, he will also cause craft, that is deceit and fraud, to succeed in his hand, and he will magnify himself in his heart, and by peace, declaring peace, he will destroy many. Yes, it's coming. Destroy many, declaring peace. Depopulation, while he's, de while he's saying he's going to bring peace, he will also stand up against the prince of princes. Now, if you remember, in, well, let's just turn to it and read it. I don't want you to miss that. You see, the prince of princes, hold your place right there in Daniel now and turn over here to Re Revelations, Revelation 17. Revelation 17, and look at in verse 7, you see the seven heads verse 9 says these are seven hills on which this religion sets this great city sets at the leader of the kings of the earth how could you not recognize that that's the catholic church do you know of another religion that says it has a city that sets on seven hills that passes laws to get rid of all forms of holiness <laughs> come on be honest with yourself <laughs> This is fully described. This religion is fully described to you. And verse 14 says, he stands up against the prince of princes. That's what Daniel says. These will make war with the lamb. The lamb is the prince of princes. That's our high priest, Yahshua Messiah. Now back, to, back to Daniel. Uh, this We're in, still in eight. I didn't mean to 
take up all the time in this, but, but then in verse 26, he says, The vision of this evening and morning, which was told, is true. Therefore, seal up the vision. <laughs> Turn off the television. <laughs> <laughs> For it will be for many days, many days, distant future. And Daniel was very uh, perplexed in his heart. Let's go over to Daniel 12 and look at verse, verse 3 now. And, well, re re remember we, we started there with uh, uh, verse 44, tidings will come to this man. Now this is one of the things that's going to take place. Then he will plant his dwelling of his palace between the, between the seas and the glorious holy mountains of Zion, uh, yet he will come to his end, and none will help him. Now keep those things in mind, because you're going to see them take place very shortly now. Now look at verse, chapter, chapter 12 now, and, and, and we see verse 1 is the great time of trouble. This is the same time that Yahshua spoke of for this generation, and then many, verse 2, many of those who sleep is going to be awakened, that's, we're going to, we're shown this resurrection by Yahshua also in this generation, in this generation, you're going to see it, those who are wise, verse 3, will shine as the brightness of the heavens, and, and those who turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. Forever, <laughs> if they turn them to, just get what he said there. You have eternal life. It's the same thing Yahshua said in in Revelations twenty two fourteen. Those who turn people to righteousness, that is forever. The other is not forever. Verse four. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the. And seal the book to the time of the end. The time of the end. Many, many will run to and fro and knowledge will be increased. We saw that. It started in 1934. Then verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked and behold, there was two others. One of those was born in 1934. One on this side of the banks of the river. The other on the other side of the banks of the river. Now... With that in mind, let's go, turn over to Isaiah. Isaiah, I think, Isaiah 43. This is speaking of the, of the two witnesses. Isaiah 43, Yahweh allows one of them, one of them to die. Isaiah 43, found on page 558. Isaiah 43, therefore I will dissolve the Levitical priesthood. He did. He dissolved it. They no longer have it in, on the seven hills of Rome. They destroyed the temple, 70 A.Y., destroyed the house of Yahweh, killed what they thought was all, all the Sabbath keepers, and no one else would ever dare keep the Sabbath after that. Well, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Hitler had to kill six million. <laughs> he found a six million that they didn't want there, so he tried it again. He killed six million. They thought that that would be the last of them. <laughs> now the list goes on and on. This word, it's an ever growing thing, and never, never, not one of these is going to fail. So, Turn your foot from the Sabbath, you may die for it, but it's eternal. It means eternal life. Turn your foot from the Sabbath, Isaiah 58. That's the start of everlasting life. Well, here in uh, 43 now, he says, Therefore I will dissolve the Levitical priesthood and will give Jacob to the curse. That means door, death. That's a... My brother, my older brother, and Israel to reproaches. Israel to reproaches. I went on television the first time. Somebody asked me about this when I, 
went on television the first time. It was in Abilene. Yes, in Abilene is on KTAB. Uh, I don't know the year, don't know the month. I know certain ones went with me that left the house of Yahweh uh, at that time. I couldn't record in my own home, so I had to make a deal to record with them in the studio. And I do believe, I think it was in either 82 or 83. I think that was the first time that when I first went on television publicly, and that brought some heat. <laughs> big, big time persecution. And that's where that's where it started. That and the newsletter, a newsletter that I put out, is wanting, to, wanting me to run for office <laughs> before I went, before I took that, wrote that newsletter and took that. Went on television, they wanted me to run for office in the city. After that, they wanted me to run from the offices. <laughs> the Lords of Abilene didn't want me anymore. <laughs> hey, praise Yahweh. <laughs> okay, 43. Now get that, he's going to give Yaakov, but now, but now as the uh, great elder... Kohan Benjamin uh, brought out this morning, be turning over to Revelations 11 uh, about myself and my brother uh, ministering together. Revelation shows this. Revelations 11 shows this. See, you got two witnesses here. Let them foretell them. That's Isaiah 44. But one of them died. But before he dies, before he dies, you see here they're working together in Revelations 11. Revelations 11, the first, he says, Then there was given to me a reed like unto a rod. That's been covered a lot, and you really need to get that and memorize it to know what this is actually talking about. And the messenger stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Yahweh and the altar and its confines uh, where they worship within. But the court which is outside the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given to the, jet, to the nations. And the holy city they will tread underfoot three and a half years. I will give to my two witnesses... See, they're together. I will give to my two witnesses to perform their duty. Isaiah 44 shows my two witnesses. In verse, uh, uh, verse 8, Isaiah 44, verse 8, you are my witnesses. Well, here he's saying, I will give to my two witnesses. It should be plain enough. Then he gives their names, Israel and Jacob. And tells even how they got them and how he spoke through a, uh, from the bowels of my mother. He made mention of my name. All of those things are in prophecy. I will give to my two witnesses to perform their prophetic offices. And they will foretell events about the three and one half years those Cast about in dark with darkness. These are uh, these are mark out as it were. <laughs> these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands ministering. Now remember that word ministering, because that's exactly what Zechariah four, five, and six shows they will be doing together, ministering to the whole earth. I will give to them to do this. But one dies, but they do minister together for a certain time. It's shown they have a separation. They separate, and then they go back together when it's called to do so with the sue, the lawsuit, <laughs> as 
the great Kohad Benjamin brought out this morning. Praise Yahweh. Now, now be, before his death, we ministered together. As Revelation shows, now go to Zechariah now. Zechariah. Now, if y'all forget this this week, I'm going to have to rehearse it again next Sabbath to bring you up to date on it because I'm still a long ways and my time is up. <laughs> but <laughs> Zechariah now 4 and verse 2. Verse 2, these are the two lampstands. You see that? Verse 2. Behold, the two the lampstand. The seven lamp lampstand. That's exactly what you saw in Revelations 11 when the two witnesses are together. These are, these are the lampstand <laughs> and the two olive trees. <laughs> Look at verse 3. These are the two olive trees. <laughs> How much plainer can it get? But it's here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. So why didn't Billy Grimm? see this why didn't he notice this <laughs> instead of falling backwards it works Yahweh says it works here a little and there a little and look at verse 12 then I spoke to him again and said to him what are these two olive branches here's where you see the word that the, these two are called branches as you see in another place where one of these branches actually establishes the house of Yahweh. That's over in chapter 6. Now look at verse 14. 14. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand for the supreme ruler of the earth. They're the ones that actually stand on behalf of Yahweh the supreme ruler of the earth. The gods don't rule the universe. They deceive and connive to get rid of man because they don't want mankind ruling over them. And, that, and, and they know that he, he's going to. And they're trying right now to figure out a way to destroy heaven and earth, hoping that will stop it. In chapter 5 now, and look at 5 and 6, he says... Uh, uh, the last part, last two lines, that which is sent by commandment. Verse 6, this is chapter 5 and verse 6, uh, and I asked, what, what is it? And he answered, the ephah, the standard of perfection, sent by Yahweh. Then he added, this is honor, knowledge, understanding throughout the whole earth. Now this is the first time as Revelations 11, 1 through 5 show also. So you know that it's speaking of the same time period. Now look at verse, uh, verse uh, 9. Verse 9. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, two women, the first and last eras of the house of Yahweh, sent with commandment, same as the speaking of there, the Spirit of Yahweh came and, and overshadowed them, and they were covered with the covering of saints, and they exalted, magnified, and extolled the ephah. That's what was brought out this morning in the Numbers, if you remember that very same thing, 322. <laughs> I told, told the elder a while ago that Luke 320, 322, 322. I said, that, that loop around Abilene, that was half finished when I came to Abilene. Loop 322. It went from I-20 to Buffalo Gap. <laughs> half finished when I moved to Abilene. It was finished when the witness moved to Abilene and made the complete loop. Oh, there's more. I'm, I forgot. There's more to be un brought on that. Well, you'd still bring <laughs> Okay, standard of perfection. Uh, control. They will e they and they exalted, magnified, and extolled the ephah, the standard of perfection, set by Yahweh's laws, separating the ways of the world from the ways of Yahweh. Uh, that is verse uh, uh, that is chapter five. Chapter five. Let's go to chapter six. 
in verse 11. Take the silver and the gold and make crowns and, and set them upon the head of Yahshua, son of Yahweh, says son of Yazadek, that word Strong's Concordance tells you that's what that word is Yahweh, the creator. Set upon Yahshua, son of Yahweh. Remember, he's included in this prophecy now, and Isaiah, we'll get back to that in a little bit. The high priest, so he's high priest. He's high priest over the house of Yahweh. Speak to him and say, this is what Yahweh of hosts says, Behold the man whose name is the branch. You just saw this over here in chapter 4, verse 12. There are the two branches. The two branches. Behold the man whose name is the branch. Remember, one dies. So there's only one branch left after that. Was the date given when my brother died? Great. Praise Yahweh. You need to remember that and remember when the house of Yahweh was established. You see that and put it together? Have you got it? Remember it? If you don't, now get that sermon and listen to it again. We brought out all those facts here this morning. My brother died at a certain time. The house of Yahweh was established by the other branch. The younger of the two witnesses that was born in 1934 that started this generation that will not pass away until all of these things are fulfilled. Yes, it's hard to understand if you don't have a teacher, but you've got a teacher. You have no, no excuse. <laughs> For he will branch out from his place and he will build the house of Yahweh. I don't know of another in all the world, another house of Yahweh that has legal right. And that's what Jacob and I fought together to establish. That we are the only ones on the face of the earth that have legal right to this name. House of Yahweh. It's, <laughs> it's given to us in prophecy. Why wouldn't we fight for it? It was given to us, too, to do this. And yes, we ministered together to do it as it was brought out. As Yahweh said, we would. Build the house of Yahweh, verse 13. Yes, he will build the house of Yahweh. He will bear glory and will sit and rule on his throne. He will be a priest upon his throne and the council of peace will be between he and Yahshua, the son of Yahweh. In, in chapter, if you go back to chapter 5 again and look at verse 5, I'm going to quit here in just a little bit. Verse 5, now uh, see chapter 5 and verse 5, he says, Then the Moloch, the messenger, uh, who was speaking with me, came forward and said, lift up your eyes now and see and understand. I'm telling you now, look at this, read it, read it and understand it. <laughs> He's telling us, look at this, read it and understand what I'm saying here. That which is sent by commandment. Understand, this is sent by commandment. Yahweh's house is taking a message Sent by commandment. No, no church could do this. No God worshipers can do this. Yahshua said plainly in chapter 7 of Matithia, they cannot bring forth righteousness. They can't. It's impossible. Let them, the two witnesses, bring this forth. They are my witnesses, he said. <laughs> Verse 6. And I asked, what is it? And he answered, this is the ephah, the standard of, of perfection, which is sent by Yahweh's laws. Then he added, this is honor, knowledge, understanding throughout the whole world. That is our job, yours and mine. We're the ones that built the house of Yahweh. 
And our job is to take this standard of perfection throughout the whole world. Throughout the whole world. Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. I was in hopes I'd get up further than this, but it's uh, still been interesting, right? <laughs> A little. <laughs> Isaiah 11. Remember our job. Here a little and there a little. Found on page 537. Isaiah 11. And remember what you just read now, the standard of perfection to all the world. And Isaiah, I think Isaiah, his whole book was written about this house. <laughs> That's the way it seems. Everything in here, maybe if you find something you don't understand that Isaiah said, it's probably because it's mis mistranslated to take out the name else of Yahweh. Uh, there will come forth a rod. There will come forth a rod out of the stem of Yesha. Uh, and, and a branch, remember the word branch and branches. These are the two branches. Will grow out of his, of his roots. Roots, that's the disciples, his 12 disciples that wrote book two of the book of Yahweh. A fantastic, a fabulous work writing those books. And prison, prisoners, Yachanan wrote that book of Revelations in prison. Every apostle was arrested, <laughs> arrested, yes, and, and uh, 11 of the 12 of them murdered, most of them in Rome, the seven hills of Rome. That's where he saw that it was drunk with the blood of the saints. That's what he says in Revelation 17. The spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him, this branch, the spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him. This is Yahweh's own words. That Yeshua said, you're a fool if you don't believe every word that the prophets have spoken. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of, spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge and the, and the reverence of Yahweh. Now that's Yahweh's testimony. We have Yahweh's testimony behind us. We are the house of Yahweh. Look at verse 3 which will make him of quick understanding, and, and, his, and his delight will be in the reverence of Yahweh. He will not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor the hearing, nor will he reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness, that's Yahweh's laws, remember? In, I, in 1 John, 1 Yachanan, uh 3, that righteousness, Righteousness is practicing the laws of Yahweh. With righteousness, will he judge the poor? Judge the poor? Judge the poor? Did you get that? <laughs> judge the poor? Yes, we invite the poor. <laughs> and reprove with equity for the meek, humble of the earth. He will smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. He will smite the earth, that is the sinful earth, with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips will slay the wicked. Yes, we are bringing them down and Yahweh says we, we would. Righteousness will be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. Uh, Yeshua started his work In 1 to 3 A.Y., there's, there's uh, um, be turning over to Hebrews, Hebrews, the first chapter. Uh, there's some discrepancies about when he was born, but it was anyway started with 1 to 3, and all of it was the start of this uh, A.Y., uh, identification but in Hebrews he now he became the high priest over the house of Yahweh and you see that in in Hebrews 1 to 13 10 10 21 and 16 and then back to Yahshua in our time saying 
in Matitia 16, 18, that I will establish my house. I will build my house, he says. He's the high priest. As Yahweh showed in chapter 6 of Zechariah, he's the high priest. And I got up to this, and if you'll remember it, <laughs> and this next sermon is really going to be exciting to you, really exciting to you. Because <laughs> we, we go into... We go into the refugees, Yahweh willing, uh, that is taking place right now and what's going to occur with them while Satan is her, doing her killing. Yahweh is lining up people to come to the house of Yahweh. Uh, they will not be killed. Yahweh has protection for them. And uh, he promises that. And he shows in quite a bit of detail that we probably won't bring out all of it, but uh, he shows quite a bit of detail on how they're going to get here. And of course, they're getting prepped right now for that time period. Prepped, I said, prepped. That's each week. And we see the sermons are going to the world, all the world. We're getting feedback from it. So we know that they are getting them. They are converting, they are repenting and converting right now as they hear my voice. They know that we are the house of Yahweh. They know that I am Yahweh's last day's witness. They know that this house of Yahweh is carrying forth this work to all the world right now according to the prophecies. There's, there's no doubt if you know the scriptures, if you know the scriptures, there can't be a doubt that this is this is not, not Yahweh's work that he prophesied would be going forward at this time. The people are getting ready to be brought here. We're getting them ready to come to the house. Once they get here, they will know. They're setting hard right now. They're, they're getting literature. They're reading it online. They're going into the computers, into the Israel Says program. They're reading as much as they can, as fast as they can, and they are, they are learning. They, they're, they, in many of these places where they're reading this, they're also sharing it with others. And this is a big plus. That they take this, this literature and they take the, the uh, computers and they're actually showing this to others and letting them listen to it. So those, there's hope being built among the people where there was no hope. <laughs> and when the time is just right, when the time is just right, those people will be here on the land that belongs to the house of Yahweh. May Yahweh bless you, and I'll turn the service back, back to the next leader. I love you. Thank you.